something a little different uh, today and provide you with a detailed update about what we're doing to crack down on gun violence in the city. And before I begin, I have to share with you really how angry I am uh, and concerned about uh, what happened over the weekend with nearly two dozen shootings, uh, several of them fatal. And I say angry, but there's such a mix of emotions. It's angry, it's frustrated, it's extreme sadness, uh, particularly when we look at the fact that, you know, it's, it's not outside invaders um, killing members of our community, it's us uh, killing us. And it's, it, it's extremely, uh, like I said, uh, it, it angers me, it, it's frustrating, and it, it's extremely sad to, to think about um, the, the state of our community. It was a terrible display of ugly and senseless violence. And we know that those who perpetrate those acts uh, are cowards who disgrace our communities and our city. And we will do everything, everything possible to apprehend them and to bring them to justice. I'm just, uh, it, it sickens me knowing that too many of our residents feel unsafe in their neighborhoods, even inside their own homes. It's unacceptable, and it's a situation that I will not tolerate. Reducing violence is the number one priority of my administration and will not be satisfied. We will not be satisfied until Baltimore becomes one of the safest big cities in our country and residents feel safe in their neighborhoods all across our city. I've made it clear to the commissioner that he has my full support and he will have the resources that he needs to target repeat offenders, gangs, as well as illegal guns. We ask for the community's support and cooperation with the police. It is uh, during these difficult times that partnerships between the police and the communities are ever more vital. Uh, we need your help so that officers can get the information they need to do their jobs to track down suspects and to make our community safer. And finally, before I turn it over to Commissioner Batts, I want to again emphasize the importance of stopping the flow of illegal guns into America's cities. We only have one gun store in the city of Baltimore, so it's clear that not enough is being done to disrupt the pipeline of illegal guns into Baltimore and to other cities around the country. Over the past few days, I met with my fellow mayors from across the country, and this issue was front and center for all of us. And it needs to be front and center with Congress. On Friday, Vice President Biden uh, spoke to us and assured mayors that the Obama administration is committed to pressing forward. We need common sense laws, including stronger background checks and federal enforcement to help crack down on illegal guns. An overwhelming majority of Americans support stronger background checks. And both sides of the aisle need to work together on a solution. Thank you. And now I'll turn it over to Commissioner Batch to give us an update on the police department's efforts to date and moving forward. Thank you. Commissioner Batch? Yes, ma'am. I'm not going to speak from any notes. I'd just like to thank the mayor for her support and her continued support in, in what we're doing. You know, many times uh, I read and, and uh, look at a TV and the reports that you do, and we're looking at numbers of seven up and eight up and nine up uh, and different numbers. These are not numbers for me. We talk about outrage. These are not numbers. These are human beings. These are people. I look at this 18-year-old little girl who was lost this weekend on Kenwood. I look at as I go out on the streets at McCullough Homes yesterday where kids were out, uh, but some gang members out there felt a need to fire shots out there, putting at risk those young kids. And I talked to the mothers who were out there. Outrage, you don't understand what my outrage is about these circumstances. I've made it very clear to my staff, I made it very clear to our organization that we will respond and we will respond assertively. And what we will share with you today after I finish is having uh, Deputy Commissioner Skinner talk about some of the successes that we're, we're taking on. But I have to say this, and we have to do a better job. We were doing a number of things this weekend. We did not share that, and that's a problem for us. Our messaging this weekend was terrible. We did have issues that took place. We should have been in front of you telling exactly what was going on. I am connected to this organization every single day. 
I am driving uh, directions almost every single hour. On Friday night, I had uh, Colonel Dean Paul Muir, who's my leading command officer out in the field that was giving me updates and I was giving him directions every single hour this weekend, so I was aware of those things. What I did not share, and we should have shared with you uh, more information, I'm going to talk about Kenwood for a second. See, what you have to understand and what uh, I knew and what we were working on and that we should have did a better job talking to our community is that in that small block of Kenwood, we have a blood gang that has one block. On the exact same other block is we have Black Gorilla Family on the next block. Then we have another crew that has been walk coming in called DJ Boys who are starting to come in. When we had that shooting, we mobilized the organization extremely quickly and very fast because shootings that took place with some of the players out there uh, this past Saturday had resulted in multiple shootings about two years ago. So we were identifying uh, uh, what we call, uh, uh, not assistants, but uh, uh, co-conspirators who have been attached, arrested, friends, family. We were identifying them, we were locking them down, we were searching them out in a very quick fashion. I know what occurred out there on that, that block. I can't give you too much information, but we're responding. On a number of these all weekend, we knew what was taking place. We were trying to get in front of it very quickly. We are having a spike. We are following up on it. And what I want to do now is bring up Deputy, Deputy Commissioner Skinner to tell you about some of the gains that we've made in the last couple of days. Uh, thank you. Uh, as I said yesterday, and I'll say today, is that we're getting a tremendous amount of information that's coming in from a whole variety of different sources. And quite frankly, we're working around the clock relentlessly to follow up on every lead that comes in. So once again, we're asking citizens uh, to support us any information that they may have in response to any of these cases. And I'll just highlight a few. We're going to be releasing before the end of the day uh, names and specifics. Uh, we had an incident last night uh, in the Northeast Districts. We have two people in custody for that incident. Part of the response to that incident was uh, uh, an enforcement campus within the area, and we caught the suspects very, very rapidly after that incident. Uh, in addition to that, we made an arrest yesterday in a, a robbery-type shooting um, within West Baltimore, and we're currently actively looking right now for an individual who shot three people up in the Northwest on Saturday night outside of a nightclub. All of these cases uh, coming to the head within the last 24 hours is a direct result of the information that we're receiving from the community. In addition to those cases I just described, we have numerous, numerous leads that we're following up on multiple cases around the city. And within the next 24-hour cycle, we're expecting to announce another wave of arrests related to these cases. As we speak right now, we have officers out executing search and seizure warrants around the city. We're taking proactive enforcement. And as the day develops today, we'll be releasing some of the names on these cases of people that are wanted uh, or criminally charged r related to these incidents. Thank you. The mayor has time for a few questions on this and any other topic. Our mayor, the comptroller was critical of. Can I get rid of my mint first? I'm sorry. I, I chose a bad time to take a mint. One second. Sorry about that. Uh, the comptroller was critical of the Department of Public Works response time to uh, the calculations made for these mm -hmm. water bill increases. How do you respond to her? She is not happy. She wants a delay. And yeah, and uh, I think we were clear this morning um, that we will take a look that uh, as of today all of the questions that were posed have been answered and uh, if we find ourselves in a different position next week we'll address it uh, next week. We, we uh, work to be very responsive uh, but at the end of the day this is a frustrating situation for us all. I've been it, um, it was, it was funny that the work that I've been doing at the Conference of Mayors was used uh, to suggest that my administration doesn't understand uh, the, the affordability issue when um, in leadership, you know, nationally, that's what I've been talking about for years, that the only thing we have is to, um, to charge our ratepayers for this because there is no uh, federal assistance uh, for these uh, grant infrastructure problems. And while we're frustrated about this uh, water rate uh, increase in efforts to um, to comply with, with unfunded federal mandates, some cities are contemplating, um, you know, surrendering their incorporation because they simply cannot afford the uh, unfunded federal mandates. I mean, this is 
it's frustrating here. It's frustrating all across the country. And um, you know, I've been doing the work with a conference with the Clinton Global Initiative to to try to have um, reasonable conversations about affordability. We can we cannot continue uh, to set um, standards that uh, that can't be met. Uh, by the by, the ratepayers, we have to have a different way, and that's the the work that I've been doing, the advocacy that that I've been uh, that I've been doing. So I know that this is frustrating, um, and I've been working uh, hard to. You know, we we work on two fronts. You know, here in uh, locally, we work to make sure that we have an efficient system, and when there are problems, working we're working to correct them. But nationally, uh, focus on the advocacy around uh, trying to get. Uh, more support, more federal support for infrastructure, so it's not all on the backs of uh, our ratepayers. Mayor, the, the the message that seemed to come through loud and clear from many of the people who spoke this morning, mm -hmm. citizens, was not just anger and frustration that we have to pay more, but a complete lack of confidence in the competence of city government. Yeah, I heard that. How do you respond to that? I, it, any time, any time that there that we talk about increasing fees uh, and and people are struggling, it um, I know it's frustrating. Uh, I know that in the councilman talked about people making painful choices. Um, when I talked about when I introduced a ten year plan, uh, I talked about the the painful choices that Baltimore has to make based on our uh, fiscal uh, situation and related that to the, the tough choices that people have to make around their table uh, every night. It's frustrating. Everybody wishes we were in a different situation, but wishing isn't going to change it. We have to make tough decisions in order uh, to change the uh, financial future of our city. And when you do that, uh, you, you can't make those changes and, and make everybody happy uh, at the same time. I know that um, you know that's why they're called tough decisions. And it is it is far easier. Uh, it would be far easier for me uh, to go from uh, fiscal year to fiscal year, uh, trying to make as many people as uh, happy as possible, and then we could end up as like a, you know like other cities that are um, facing financial takeover or have uh, financial managers put in place because the city was unwilling to to take the tough action required. Uh, to get their financial house in order. So I can you know, do the work that I know we need to do uh, to put our city back on the right path and you know, ruffle a few feathers and frustrate um, you know, people along the way. Uh, or you know, I can placate and we'll end up in the same situation as, uh, as other cities. Mayor, Councilman Brandon Scott has questioned whether the uh, police department was adequately prepared for the summer given what happened last weekend. Do you feel the department was prepared? I definitely think uh, that we're prepared. I mean, one of the things that I've been focused on is making sure that the police department has adequate resources. Uh, does it mean that we'll never see another spike in crime? I'm sure, uh, I'm sure we will. But we, we stay focused on uh, trying to reduce uh, crime and trying to uh, be prepared for every situation. I don't ever want to see an, another weekend like that. Um, but you know, the, and we will, again, continue to work uh, to uh, reduce violence. But as far as resources, while other cities were laying off police officers, I aggressively hired. You know, we're putting the resources in place to be able to respond. Do you want to speak to that, if, too? If I could follow mm -hmm. up. Uh, and, and that's a good question. Thank you for the question. I'm, I'm big on planning. That's one of the things that I do all the time. And so we're always sitting down, preparing. I can tell you day one from when I walked in, we were preparing for this summer and getting ready. Deputy Commissioner Skinner, one of the things that I have him doing with his staff is every three months I want to plan on what we're doing in our attack plan and our methods and our strategies, not, not only tactically, but strategically too at the same time. Uh, we are prepared for the summer. We've put things in place. We have a strategy that, that is out there. Um, this was a very dramatic weekend. It was dramatic. We, re we were responding behind the scenes much like I was talking to you about, but if we were ready for it, Yes, we had, we had many things that were in place, but uh, a circumstance that, that you have to look at. We had a shooting last night uh, where we pre theoretically we think that you had some people who were around a pool that came into conflict with one another, and that conflict ended up in, into a, cu a couple other shootings. And so we're responding to that. What we had here over the last month, we had a, we had a nightclub here called Mirage, and Mirage is down in Baltimore, where there was a group of people who left that club 
went to a dining spot later, and because they had a conflict at this dining spot, ended up in four to six other shootings. Now, what we've done is that we've become very good at building that intelligence and getting on it pretty, pretty quickly. And so, uh, as we have built our plans, that's what we're focusing on. But the random stuff that takes place because you step on my toes or because you look at me wrong, that's what some of the things that were taking place this weekend also. Mayor, can you talk about the Superblock and uh, the future of that development? Uh, considering this week and the lack of extension. Say the last part again. Considering what happened this week with the refusal to grant another um, extension to the development. Yeah. So Lexington Square has, has um, was a good partner and certainly stayed the course through lawsuits, through numerous reviews, and and signed an an economic inclusion plan. But ultimately, they fell short in meeting the conditions that were necessary to close on the project. And I've asked BDC to spend the next month reviewing the market, the site characteristics, uh, as well as meet with other stakeholders. The goal is for BDC to present me with a plan moving forward and a new F new RFP. Uh, next month, we're going to de uh, determine what the new R RFP will look like, whether it's going to be the same scope or smaller. Um, it's too early to tell, uh, but I hope that the RFP, my plan is for the RFP to be issued this fall, and we're exploring ways to attract uh, a diverse group of developers uh, to this project when, it, when it's offered for redevelopment. Does the pilot die with this deal? I'm not sure. I don't yeah, think the, so. The Supreme Court issued um, really a landmark ruling today striking down the Defense of Marriage Act. The city has offered domestic partner benefits. Does that change now? What happened? So I don't. I, that was happening while we were in, um, at the Board of Estimates, so I don't know what the entire ruling is. Um, I'm certainly looking forward to it. I mean, you should know. I've been a, a big supporter of uh, you know marriage equality and uh, rights in the uh, gay community, and you know, as far as I know, this looks like a victory, and I'm happy. I mean, after the the uh, voting rights decision yesterday, we needed some good news from the Supreme Court. So. Um, I'll certainly look into that. I, I don't have an answer for you now. Mayor, your, your finance director said the results from the board from the hotel uh, conference financial soon would be available this week to push back. Can you talk to us about what the results were for the hotel? Yeah, I don't have that information. If uh, you want to get back to me a little later after I Do can try to find it. No, but I can look into it and get back to you. Last question, please. Mayor, it's been a year since there was an announcement that there would be a and it looks like there's been private groups that have stepped up to ensure that that didn't happen. Um, I want to know what your thoughts are. Summer camp started this week. Um, people are talking about the violence and how the city would invest more in kids on the front end that mm -hmm. we could uh, help address the violence. And the second part of the question is asking whether or not there are any more closures for rec centers expected. Okay. So we're making tremendous progress in transforming a system of dilapidated small centers with inconsistent um, programming, inconsistent staffing, into a network, network of larger, high-quality community centers with stronger programming, stronger staffing, um, rec centers that people want to go to, not a, not a center or a system of last uh, resort. It's not been an easy process, uh, but we know that real change is never easy, and I'm proud to say um, that uh, our community organizations have stepped up in a way that's never been uh, shown before to offer quality programs in several of our older centers. We even uh, opened a rec center that was closed under the previous administration by working with a not-for-profit uh, community organization. Uh, I'm talking about the Easterwood Center. That center would have stayed closed if we didn't do something new and something creative. Uh, all of this has allowed us to better focus our resources, our limited resources, on upgrading the city uh, recreation facilities that we have, uh, focus on staffing, focus on uh, programming, including increasing uh, after-school programs in our rec centers. In addition, we'll b we are building new centers based on the new community center model. We've allocated $5 million in new capital funds for our community center master plan. Uh, in the fiscal year 14 capital budget. This is a major down payment on our 10-year financial plan effort to build as many as 10 new recre uh, recreation uh, centers within uh, 10 years. As I said, you know, change isn't easy. Uh, we didn't get into the situation with dilapidated rec centers overnight. We're, go we're not going to have 10 new centers overnight, but we will be able to, to look back at this time where we're making these, dis making these decisions uh, changing the way that we invest uh, in, in rec centers as a way, um, you know, we'll be able to look back at these major invest investments and know that we've created a better system 
uh, of quality, uh, high-performing centers for our young people. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, not planned. Not planned. Some questions? Mm -hmm.